and Bromley Baptist Church. Welcome back to Sunday Nights with Brother Billy Crow here. Glad to be with you again. Again, just a few more weeks here on Sunday Nights this way, and starting in November, we'll be back together in person at 6 p.m. on Sunday night at Brumley Baptist Church. I know you're excited for that. I pray that you'll join us then and be there with us then. Until then, though, we are going through the life of David in this manner, and we want to continue tonight talking about how God builds a king. You know, after Saul is left, after Saul has been uh, chosen to, to leave, rejected by God, David's going to be the new king, but he's not quite ready to be the king yet. He's got some major challenges and major things to do and get ready for. So God is building him using some tools. God may be using these same tools to build us as well. Um, God may be getting us ready for something that's coming in our own life. And here you see our passage. It is in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, all the way through verse 23. And it shows David in this intermediate phase getting ready to go serve God, this already but not yet sort of king that David is. Yes, he's already the king because God has chosen him, but he's not yet the king in practice because God is getting him prepared and doing some things with him to get him to that place. And that's what we're looking at as we go through this part of David's life. Last week we looked and we saw that God uses the tool of solitude. David was just out in the field by himself doing the things that God wanted him to do. And what God wanted him to do at this point in his life was simply be a shepherd, was simply to go and do uh, what God had called him to do as far as keeping the sheep. And I don't think we should miss that. You know, David being the king was ultimately going to be uh, the, the destiny, the journey. But the solitude was part of that journey. Why? Because he was intimately acquainted with God. And we talked about that last week. We saw that Jesus did that as well in these verses. We need to do the very same thing. God uses the tool of solitude. Tonight, I want us to start with the idea of God uses the tool of secrecy. Verse 18 of 1 Samuel chapter 16 says this, Then one of the young men said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician, a mighty man of valor, a war warrior, one prudent in speech, and a handsome man, and the Lord is with him. Before David would ever sit anywhere on the throne, he would spend hours quietly doing these things that verse 18 characterizes. Go back up here and look. This is verse 18 right here. What does he do? He plays the lyre. He's valiant, he's a warrior, he's eloquent, he's handsome. He's, he's doing all these things that God wants him to do. He was simply being faithful right then and there, right where God wanted him to be faithful. He, he thought nobody was watching. He thought nobody knew that he could play the harp or that he was valiant as a warrior or that he was good at speaking, or that he was a handsome man. God always trains his people in private before he uses them publicly. And we see this over and over and over again through the scripture. Before Elijah stood on Mount Carmel, he learned to walk with God privately. Go back and read 1 Kings 17 and 18 before we're facing any prophets of Baal up on the top of the mountain before we're calling down the fire to consume the sacrifice, before we're speaking boldly to the Canaanites, to those who uh, served Baal and loved Baal and wanted their God to be the God. And Elijah had to stand for Jehovah, the only one who was at that time standing for Jehovah before any of that took place. Elijah spent time alone with God. Before Elisha was the prophet of God in Israel, he followed Elijah and learned from him. Before Moses was anything, he, he was out on the backside of the desert, the Bible says, tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro. Your friends think before the disciples turned the world upside down in the book of Acts, before Peter stood boldly at Pentecost and preached and thousands were saved before 
any of the disciples ended up giving their life for the cause of Jesus, what they do first, they learned. They served in the background. They quietly just did what God wanted them to do. Secret. Now, I, I will be very honest. This is hard to do. Nobody likes this. Nobody enjoys this. Why? Because it's just that it's secret. It seems like nobody knows what you're doing. It seems like nobody cares about the service you're offering to God. It seems that nobody even notices. It's not an out front position. It's not a glamorous position. It's not a great thing that everybody sees and knows and looks and says, wow, look at that servant. Look at that person. Look what they're doing for God. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's demeaning work. It's low work. It's quiet work. Nobody knows about, nobody applauds for. I'll tell you though, God sees it. When no one else is watching, we think nobody else is paying attention. God is watching. God is using those circumstances to prepare you, to get you ready. And you would ask, well, preacher, what's he getting me ready for? I have no idea. I have no idea what he's getting you ready for. I have no idea what he's preparing you for, but I know boldly on the promise of scripture, he is at work in your life all the time. God takes no days off, takes no time when he's not busy and active doing things in our life, preparing us, molding us, conforming us. Romans 8 says that every single day we are being conformed to the image of his son. We're, we're looking more and more like Christ. So, friend, today as you lay as you lay right now, you're serving God. In, you're just serving the Lord, and nobody knows about it. Nobody's aware of it. It's just a secret. And that can be a discouraging place. You can think, wow, no one even knows I'm doing this. I will tell you boldly, God knows that you're doing it. God sees that you're being faithful day by day by day in your calling. You're being faithful day by day by day in what God has laid out in front of you. You are faithfully following one step at a time the God who has called you. God sees that. God notices that. God is fully aware of that. God wants that to be your training ground because he's placed you there for a reason. God is never idle. God never makes mistakes. God is always busy doing those things that are best for each one of us. And that may be what he's doing right now with you. God may be right now deeply preparing you for what the future holds. We seem to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded of that. Now, I want to hit one more really, really, really important thing before we leave this passage. I'm going to scroll back up here so I can show you verse 18 again. He plays the liar. He's valiant, he's eloquent, he's a warrior. Right here is the kicker. The Lord is with him. See, none of those things done in solitude matter at all unless the Lord is with you. None of that matters at all unless God is with you, unless God is in it. We sing a hymn from time to time. Little is much when God is in it. We've just preached through John 15 on Sunday morning. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. So while you're serving God in that secrecy, be sure that you are serving God. You say, what preacher? You just, that's double talk. No, it's not. While you're doing whatever it is, be sure that you're serving God. Be sure that you're doing it for the right reason. Be sure that you're doing it for the right person. Be sure your focus is primarily on the Lord and what he has laid out for you. Because there's nothing better, nothing better than a heart that is fully in tune to serving God. In private, in public, in either, in both, David is going to do that. And for the first part of his ministry, his, his life won't change because he's going to do what God wants him to do, whether it's privately or publicly. But way down the road, when we see him fail, he fails first privately before he fails publicly. 
dear friend, our private life, our secret, solitary life alone with God is of great importance. And I pray that you have gotten that message these last two weeks as we go through the life of David. How does God build a king? A step at a time. From shepherd to king, modern lessons from an ancient life. Thank you for joining me tonight. Pray you have a good and godly evening. And until I see you again, go serve.